Hi everyone, my name is Emma Griffiths and I'm a research associate in the Shao Public Health Bioinformatics Lab at Simon Fraser University in Vancouver, Canada. In this video, we'll be reviewing ontologies that are useful for harmonizing cohort data. We'll start by quickly reviewing why annotating your data with ontology terms makes your data more useful. We'll learn about a community of practice for interoperable ontology building called the Obo Foundry, and we'll shine a spotlight on a few of our lab's go-to ontologies that we frequently use in our harmonization work. In our previous videos, we described how ontologies are sets of controlled vocabulary, where every term has a clear definition and, and is assigned a unique identifier, and all the terms are linked together with logical relationships. The images in this slide presented here help to illustrate the difference between a simple controlled vocabulary and an ontology. On the left of the slide, you see a very simple pizza data dictionary, which lists the types of pizzas that are available, as well as a separate list of the types of toppings that are available. No information is known about how the pizza toppings relate to the pizza types. The, inf inf the image on the right, however, illustrates a hierarchy of terms that goes from general categories to specific types of things, as well as the relationships between pizza types and toppings, which are encoded using specific relations like has topping. These relations explicitly define for both people and computers which pizzas have which toppings, which provides an additional layer of information that's missing in the simple data dictionary. So, simply put, the benefits of using ontologies to standardize data is that ontology terms provide consistency in the meanings of words, which can be specified by using ontology identifiers. Ontology, ontologized data is human and machine readable. The consistent data structure increases interoperability between datasets and databases, and the ability to use synonyms or map between term labels enables users to use the vocabulary they're used to using, while the computer knows they're talking about the same information. The logical relationships between fields and terms enables lots of information types to be linked together, which then enables more complex querying and inferencing, so you can start to ask more complex questions. Taken together, using ontologies better prepares your data for more complex analyses like machine learning and also helps to standardize your data for different uses, effectively future-proofing it and making it more reusable. Now, the way ontologies are structured affects how they can be used and how interoperable they are. Anyone can build an ontology specific for their project or application, but how things are grouped into higher level categories called classes and what relations, relations you use to link your terms if they're not uniform between ontologies, will impact the way a computer understands the information. Basically, if your ontologies aren't built the same way, the less likely they can work together. There are different philosophies for ontology building, but the Open Biomedical Ontology Foundry, better known as the Obo Foundry, has achieved an incredible level of consensus in the principles and practices they implement for ontology design. The Foundry consists of a community of scientists that recommend the use of the Basic Formal Ontology, or BFO, to structure how they group things into classes, and the Relation Ontology, or better known as RO, for prescribing a set of consistent relation be relations between terms. They encourage the reuse of terms between ontologies so that the same words always mean the same things, no matter what sector or discipline you're working in. There is some oversight as well, as ontologies accepted into the Obo Foundry Library must fulfill certain criteria, which are evaluated before the ontology is accepted. And there's also a centralized system for assigning identifiers. Importantly, Obo Foundry ontologies are all open source, so there's no black boxes, and software developers can take th these ontologies and use them as they see fit. This enables folks to pick the terms that they want from a common source to fit their purpose, which better enables the integration of data across databases and datasets. The Obo Foundry has gained a lot of momentum over the past few years, and independent ontology developers have contributed over 190 different ontologies. Now, some are better curated than others, and some are also better maintained than others. In our work, curating and harmonizing different datasets, we've become very familiar with a lot of them and recommend certain ontologies for describing different types of information. For example, if you're describing different organisms, be they plants, animals, or microorganisms, we recommend using NCBI Taxon. If you need to describe natural or built environments, you can select the terms you need from ENVO, which is the environment ontology. 
If you need to describe food, feed, or food processes like food production, preservation, and cooking, we recommend Food On, the food, on food Ontology. If you need to describe chemicals like drugs and medications, we recommend using KEBI, which is the Chemical Entities of Biological Importance Ontology. If you need to describe different kinds of biological assays and results, we recommend the Obel Foundry's flagship ontology, OB, the Ontology of Biological Investigations. If you need to describe things like symptoms, we recommend using the Human Phenotype Ontology, better known as the HPO. And of course, if you're a Seneca researcher and need to describe genomics data, we recommend using GECKO, the Genomics Cohorts Knowledge Ontology. These are just a few of the ontologies available for you to use. The key thing to remember is that the goals of the Obel Foundry are to develop ontologies that are reusable and interoperable. But they're built on use cases, so it's possible that not every term you need for your specific use case will be in one of them. While this may seem like a limitation, it's important to recognize that these ontologies are living lexicons. That means they're never complete, but instead are continually ev evolving to meet research and knowledge needs. And this offers opportunities for the community to contribute terms and help ontologies to grow and become richer in the knowledge that they represent. Thank you for watching our video on useful ontologies for harmonizing cohort data. If you're looking to map certain types of data to ontologies and would like some advice, please get in touch with one of the Seneca data harmonization team. Or also feel free to send us an email at info at genepio.org. In our next video, we'll discuss COVID-19 as, as a specific example of applying data standards to harmonizing cohort data. See you next time.